Hi guys, welcome back. Um, today we're going to go over just a, a quick review on um, how to make flats in Illustrator. So we went over how to draw flats by hand, um, but now uh, the school has worked it out um, that all students will have uh, access to all Adobe programs within the Adobe Creative Cloud, um, which is fantastic. Um, if you are wondering how to get access to that, uh, look at the announcement section on our Blackboard and there is an announcement on uh, how to get access to the Adobe Creative Suite. So um, for our collection project, I greatly encourage all you guys to try and use Illustrator uh, to do your flats. Uh, you should be somewhat familiar with it as uh, you went over it in FD13. But we are going to go ahead and uh, just do a little refresher on how to do it. And again, I am encouraging you all to do your flat, your collection flats uh, or flats for your collection project in Illustrator. Um, it is much uh, more advantageous to be very um, uh, fluent in how to do them in Illustrator than it is to do them by hand, just uh, as a reflection of what we see in the uh, uh, industry today. Uh, most flats in the industry are done in Illustrator or similar sort of vector program. Um, very few companies really have people drawn by a hand anymore. So what we're going to do is um, I'm here on Google just to Google technical croquis. And the first thing that pops up when we go to images is the technical croquis that I gave you. So I'm just going to go to images and this one right here. So I'm going to click on it. <clears throat> And to get it into Illustrator, all I'm going to do is, uh, all you got to do is copy and paste it. So uh, I'm going to right click, copy image, then I'm going to go into Illustrator, and um, you're not going to have to print these out, um, because of course you're just going to send me the images, so it doesn't really matter what size, but I'm just going to go with letter. And once I have the actual file popped up, I'm going to paste it or control V or right click paste. And what we'll get All right. Come on now. There we are. Is um our little croquis template. Um, and it nicely aligns with our uh, page outline. Now, you can work in this size, that's fine. Um, you might not be able to fit all your flats on one page, which is also fine. Um, but if you want to work a little smaller, you can just size it um, to whatever size you would like. Um, it's perfectly fine. Um, just remember that all your flats should be on sort of the same size croaky. So you shouldn't have like really big pants and then like a really tiny shirt or something like that. They should all be sort of the same proportionate size. Look like they sit, go on the same size croaky or the same size person. Now once we have our template, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this layer up here. This is a little layer lock. And then I'm going to pop on down all the way to the bottom of the layers screen or the layers tab and create a new layer. Maximize this. So now I have two layers, I have layer two and layer one. I'm gonna work on mostly layer two or make new layers if I need it. But what this does is it basically just sort of separates my croquis. Um, I can toggle the visibility on and off so I can sort of check how my flats are going um, throughout the drawing without you know the croquis there, so what they look like on their own. And the other kind of fun thing to do or, or neat thing is um, if you go to view, and go to um, rulers, show rulers. You can now click and drag out guidelines. And sometimes it's nice to just place a little guideline right in the middle there. So let's make just a very quick, simple flat. Let's say um, like a dress. Um, and I'll kind of go over how to do a little bit of flares and, and maybe some little uh, technical details, maybe pleats or the things that people have a little bit of trouble drawing in Illustrator. So let's do a dress. So I'm going to zoom in. Always use your zoom functions. It makes it easier, especially for those small details. 
Okay, and I'm going to grab my pen tool. And when we do the pen tool, it's good to work with a black stroke. So remember, this is the stroke, the sort of li the line color. And this is the fill, okay, the solid one. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to have my stroke black and my fill invisible. The uh, red slash means invisible. Um, and that's because I don't want it to fill up with white as I go because then I won't be able to see my croquis. Um, it's also unnecessary because the page white is going to come through anyways. So it's not like it's going to be hollow or anything. We're still going to see white in sort of the middle of it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, again, just like in uh, when we're sketching it, I'm going to go ahead and let's do a nice little v-neck. Um, only work in the half. So let's do, let's make it a fun little sexy dress. So remember to make those curves, I'm holding down once I'll, I'll click to place that anchor point down and then I'll click and hold and drag away from the point I just created. And as I drag it away, you get these little handlebars and they will start to curve the line depending on how far you drag it and in what direction. Um, don't worry if you ever mess up because you can always go back and fix what you've done. Now I want this to be straight because, uh, uh, but it's not happening because whenever I curve, I get a sort of balance curve. If you don't want that, just click again on the point and it, that handlebar for that side goes away. So we're gonna continue down and what kind of little dress should this be? Maybe, <clears throat> what do you wanna show? Let's do little flounces. So we're gonna do a little flounce dress. Maybe I'll add that this. So I'm bringing it out because it's gonna be flared with a lot of little um, drapes. Now to draw the drapes, let me zoom in here. This is what I'm gonna do. So remember whenever you're drawing like full drapes, They'll look almost like a little staircase. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on the hem and then we'll do the lines later, the, the folds that go up or the, you know, drape lines. And I'm going to click and kind of round this out like that. Now I'm going to click again to get rid of my subsequent balance curve. And then I'm going to sort of step it down nice and sharp. Now I'm going to come out here and <clears throat> do another little curve because we want our flares to be round, nice round flares. And I'm just going to continue on like that. Little curve. And again, I'm not, I, I, I'm not worrying too much about it because I can always go back and fine tune it. Like that one needs a little bit of fine tuning, but it's okay. And then once you sort of get to the point where maybe it's gonna be flattening out a little bit, your depth is gonna be a little bit less. You can add a couple inward flounces as well. Maybe another one, just go in. Let me zoom in, show you what I'm doing. So we're going, this is sort of just in between. You'll see these a uh, little bit more on in the middle here. And then I'm going to end this little flare right in the middle. There's my middle line. Remember, I don't want to go past that because everything's going to be symmetrical. Okay, now I'm going to go back and maybe just adjust a couple of these. Like this one looks a little flat. So I'm going to just sort of round it out a little bit. Maybe I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And remember that our flares also kind of want to be in this kind of nice round shape. Can I take my handlebars away? What happened? There it is. Okay, maybe this one needs to be a little bit rounder. Bring these down a little 
like that. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to focus on the depth of basic shape that I have. So now I want to focus on um, the detail lines and seams that I might have. So let's see, what are we going to do for this one? Um, it's going to be woven. So let's assume it's woven. So what do we need? Well, we need some sort of um, dart in here, dart or seam. Um, and of course we need you know, our little flare lines, which are really like detail lines. Um, and let's put, I don't know, let's put a little like belt or something cute on it. Looks like it should have it. So whenever you're working and you might think you have like a basic shape to work with, you might want to use one of the basic shapes. So if I wanted to put a little belt on, I'll just put the whole thing right there. Boop. And Remember, we can toggle our visibility to sort of see how we're working. It's not bad. Okay, so let's put a, um, a little dart in too because we need this woven. Let's put a little side, side dart, side bus dart. Now down here, I'm gonna zoom in again and let's take a look at how we can do these drape lines because without any other folds, it looks a little weird. We need sort of lines coming up to sort of show where the uh, um, drape, sort of the tops of the drapes are coming down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do those separately and you'll see why in a minute. It's just a, a little bit easier. This will kind of come up. But I'm also gonna apply something uh, to these lines, a sort of line quality that makes them look a little bit drapier. So some of them I'm gonna kind of loop around like that. Some are just gonna go straight up. Some will be a little bit smaller. look weird remember we can always go back and fix them and I'm gonna have to so I'm keeping them out of here so I'm not touching them here I'm gonna go back and and bring them down just for right now it's a little easier to keep them away from the center like that or from that line like that I'll bring that up there. Okay, so now I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my white arrow. Remember, black arrow to adjust things uh, or lines or objects or shapes on a whole. White arrow to adjust individual parts of them. And we'll just bring them down to match them up. Okay, oh, one more. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these lines and I'm going to apply a different sort of line quality to them. And I'm going to show you sort of what that does and what that looks like. So um, let me toggle off this visibility so you can kind of see what it looks like now. It looks okay, but it looks a little clunky. And remember that our flats are to be as clear as possible. So, um, although this doesn't really look like darts or seams, just, you know, you can, can relate it because there's these drapes coming out here. But actually, you know what, I want one more. I want one right in here coming up. Um, okay, that's fine. But remember, it's because it's the uh, uh, same line quality as maybe my outline or my seams or things like that, it can be a little bit confusing. We don't want our flats to be confusing. So I'm going to go over here once they're all highlighted and you hold down shift and use your black arrow to select them. Um, the shift allows for multiple selection. I'm going to go to properties, move my little color guide, and then head on over to the stroke. I'm going to hit stroke to get our drop down menu. And remember, this is also where we get our dashed line, which um, uh, will be for when we need top stitch and things like that. But I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here and go to profile. And right now you see it's uniform and that's our basic sort of blocky line. But we have all these different sort of line qualities. And what I want is they want them to be kind of fat and then taper out at the top. So I'm going to choose this style. 
um, right here. And you can see what happened. Uh, they stay kind of nice and thick where they would be here, and then they sort of thin out at the ends, um, which if you can look and I'll deselect, gives them this sort of flowy, drapey quality that looks much better um, and, and much more natural than before. So we're gonna keep it like that. And um, let's apply our last details before we reflect, uh, which of course would be our top stitching. So I'm gonna go back with my pen tool and I'm gonna go ahead and draw lines where it would have top stitching. So I don't have any sleeves or anything here. I'm gonna need to adjust that with the white arrow. Remember, zoom is your friend. It makes it easy to do these sorts of things. So there we go. Now you can do this for each line, or you can do it all at once. I'm probably gonna do it once for my guys right up here. Huh, I got away from the guideline. Oh, that's fine, I can always fix it later. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both these lines again. I'm gonna go back to stroke, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to lower the weight so it was at one, so I'm gonna lower it to 0.5. And again, um, just using different line qualities and different weights is just gonna help you create a flat where the elements are slightly separate and um, make more sense. So now I'm gonna go to dash line and um, I like to set it at this size. Now the size that you set it to is gonna be dependent on how big your flats are. Now if I had a giant flat, this, you know, 12, point dash would be fine, but I'm going to set it to two, which is going to be better for this size. And we have it just right there, like so. Now I'm also going to do it down here for my hem. So let's zoom in on that. Now there's a couple ways to do this. Um, you can just go ahead and, and draw it like you did before. Um, but if you're a little bit lazier or want it to go a little bit faster, especially because there's all these little, you know, just doing a line is not so hard. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to highlight the line that I want to parallel with my top stitching like so. And um, I want to isolate it. So I need it to break right here because I don't want this to be involved with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my eraser, hold it down grab the scissors tool and cut it right here at the corner. And now you can see that that is going to isolate this down here. Oop, oop, oop. See, I can isolate it just by itself. I'm going to copy and paste it. I'm going to then do the same thing I did before, lower the line quality or line thickness. It's still a quality line. Boop, boop, boop. And then I will simply place it where it needs to go. Boop. And it's a lot quicker and easier than, you know, wiggling in and out of all those folds and steps and things like that. And you still get it to match pretty perfectly. All right. So that pretty much is looking like, actually, let's do, um, a neckline to and back so I can show you how to shade it. So let's say this does not have a v-neck and back and remember uh, we have to go ahead and draw whatever we can see. Ooh, let's change that back to what it was. Oop. Take the dash away. Oops. And we will see this as a dash line, so I can just do the same thing again. Actually, I should probably should have just kept the other one and used that, and then took the reverse to save me a little time. Come on. Come on, come on. And we'll put you right there. 
you can nudge with your arrow tools. If your little your element needs to just be nudged in a direction and it's highlighted, you can just nudge it into place. Um, okay. So there is my flat, or at least half of it. And the beauty, of course, of Illustrator is that I can simply highlight all of this. So the easiest way for me to highlight this is to grab my black arrow and click and drag down a box to gain everything. And I'm gonna hold shift and deselect my waistband because I already did both halves of it. So I don't need that to be reflected to the other side. Now, once all my elements are highlighted, I'm just going to right click, transform, reflect, And I'm going to do a copy because if I if I just hit OK, it's going to take what I have and reflect it. Um, but I want copy, and I have vertical selected here because I want it to be reflected over this vertical line. Boop. And then it pretty much matches it up horizontally, so I'm just going to use my arrow to slide it over into place. And let's see. Might have to adjust the neckline a little bit to touch. Yeah, it does look like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna touch up my neckline because I apparently wasn't very good at reaching it to the center. But easy enough. needs to be a little bit adjusted too. Look what happened here. Let's do it with the black arrow because I'm uh, adjusting it on a whole. I'm adjusting the whole size of the object. Putting that there. Okay, so um, what I want to do is I need, I'm going to show you how to apply two different sorts of shadows before we move on to the back. But what I need to do one channel I don't need to do, it'll just be sort of pizzazz. But I need to shade this part because this is the inside of the garment, right? Um, if I don't shade this, this might look like a sort of bibbed inset or like another piece of fabric that is sewn in here. Um, and then this is the actual neckline for the front, not this. But if I shade this, this lets everybody know that um, this is the inside of the garment, and then this is the back neckline, and then this indeed is the front neckline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop on over to my layers. I'm gonna lock this one and create a new one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my pen tool, and I'm simply going to trace this whole shape. Oop. Best I can, let's get that nice and matched up. Doesn't have to be perfect, you'll see why. But it should be, uh, needs to be pretty close. Okay, now of course I can always zoom in if you need to and adjust little bit. We'll see how it looks like um, uh, uh, done first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on my fill, fill it with a nice gray. I'm going to exchange my black outline for um, an invisible fill. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to properties while this is still highlighted. Make sure that it's highlighted. I'm going to go to op opacity. And I'm going to slide it down to about, you know, 50% or so. And you can see what happens. You get this sort of nice invisible shadow that sits right where you want it to. So we'll zoom out. And then there, that's what it looks like. So now I have that shaded and uh, nobody is confused as to um, what 
is the front and what is the back. Okay, so let's go ahead and do my back now. Now, um, most garments, the overall garment shape is gonna be the same from front to back. So I'm gonna utilize that. I'm not gonna start all over with my flat. And you should, use, even if you're doing, um, I gotta unlock layer two though, because most of it is, oops, unlock, not toggle off visibility. Um, you should use this technique too as much as you can. Um, oh, this is a little bit, I think this is a little bit more even. Um, sorry, so um, what I was saying is because, there we go, uh, the garment shape in back is so close to, or really should be the overall shape you see in front. Like I shouldn't get a different silhouette and back. There's no reason. Uh, this should be the silhouette from front to back. In fact, most of these details should be the same. Um, and it's true for when you hand draw flats too. So that basic, you know, one half template you did for your front should serve as, you know, at least the basic shape for your back as well. Um, because uh, you do want to keep them the same. And again, it's, it's easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste this entire flat for the back. And now what I can do is I can simply go in and um, delete the elements that I don't want. So for instance, this is the front neckline that we see. So I'm just gonna delete um, all these parts. So we'll delete that, we'll delete that. Now this needs to be cut because I don't want this whole side to go away. So I need to cut it here with my scissors tool. Remember, hold down that eraser tool or it's keyboard shortcut C too if you want that. And let's do, sometimes it's best when you highlight the line first before you cut so you can see exactly what little anchor you should be cutting on or little part you should be cutting on. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. These darts are no longer needed in back. We do, however, need to add a closure. So let's add a closure. And I'm gonna use just the line tool, which if I hold down this, I get um, different shapes. And I'm gonna put this from here. And I'm gonna hold shift to keep it nice and straight. Ooh, and I'm gonna bring it all the way down here. Be nice if this materialized. So I, oh, yeah, I did it too long, um, but that's okay. I grab my white arrow and hold on. bring it right up there. And remember that our um, uh, 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 we need to always place a zipper in a seam. So what I need is I need this to be a sort of separate pieces to place that uh, uh, zipper in it. Um, of course, it's very difficult and you have to do special technique uh, if you want just one piece with a zipper in it. You need to do a large sort of exposed zipper. So I'm gonna do a little dash line here to show where the zipper stops. And I'm gonna do up here, showing where the zipper starts. And remember, your zipper always uh, needs to go and open up a narrow waist and go down to the full hip. Otherwise, no one can wear it. And that's not what we want. We want people to be able to wear our, oh, our, our garments. So let's bring this down a little bit so it's not peeking above there. Close this up for our little zipper. And then there we are. Eee. Now this is fine. Uh, you can stop here. Let's get rid of those guidelines so you can see it without it. Uh, 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 hide my guides. Where's my hide my guides? I don't know if they're smart or not. So I'm running a brain fart. There's, we should have a hide guides in here. Ah, I was hiding. The 
my guides was hiding. Okay, so um, here we are, and this is perfectly fine. This is a perfectly fine flat. All the construction details uh, there are needed. You have your top stitching where you need it. You have a closure that will um, uh, be functional. You have darts creating the fit um, where you need it, um, so on and so forth. So you don't really need anything else. But sometimes you want a little razzle dazzle with your flats. Um, and this would be, you know, this is like portfolio or like trying to impress a client or like, you know, get a job or something sort of steal. Like there's really no need to do this if these are just going straight to the factory. Um, uh, they don't really need to be impressed. They just need to be able to read something very clearly. Um, but if you are in that instance where you want to sort of, you know, razzle dazzle and, and kind of make your flats stand apart, be, uh, because the thing is with illustrator flats is they all look the same. They, they really all just have this, you know, if they're good, they have this one kind of clear quality to them and they just, they, mine look the same as anybody else's. Um, so how do you sort of stand them, make them stand apart, make yours look a little bit nicer, a little bit jazzier and that's really in, in presentation so you make a really nice presentation you make um really nice composition and um one of those things that you do is, is um maybe make like a little bit of a drop shadow so i'm going to show you how to do that because it's really simple to do i'm going to lock all of my layers right now and create a new layer to work on Beep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to outline the shape of my garment. Now, um, actually, I'm going to do, I can go and just outline the shape of my garment, but um, like I said before, I'm a little bit lazy, and I don't really want to do all of this little wiggly work again. Um, so I'm going to do something a little bit different. So instead of just taking my pen tool and outlining the entire silhouette, um to create that shape i'm going to unlock my layer two and grab my black arrow and take this outline shape in addition to this outline shape and i'm going to copy it and i'm going to paste it uh, i'm going to bring that out in a way just to work on for a minute and um, what I want to do is I want a, a complete shape. So remember, this is separate because I cut it. So I'm just going to repair that and bring it back together. So I'm going to use my white arrow to just sort of separate it a little bit and then my pen tool to bring it back together. Let's just bring that back up again. So it matches. Okay, so now this is full. And I want another line, another side. So I'm going to select it, right click. Uh oh, I accidentally went in isolation mode. So let's exit. Um, now you can also, you don't have to right click go to transform if you're not a fan of right click or you're using Adobe. Or I'm not sorry, not Adobe, but a Mac, which I don't know, they only have one mouse button. So I'm not, I think they do have a a right button maybe it's like a two finger click but um if you don't have that alternative mouse button just go to object transform and you see we have transform and reflect right up in here in the object menu as well reflect obviously vertical copy and i'm going to move that into place and i'm going to join them just like i joined them before so we'll leave that. just going to leave them a, a, a scoonch apart so I have a little bit of space to work with when I'm joining them together. So we'll do there, and then doop, doop, and we'll neck line there, and then we'll scroll on down here, and boop, boop. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this entire thing and then put it on my other layer, and then go back and lock layer two. So. Now, um, again, I, I use this method um, because of all these little wiggly bits, but if you have a simpler shape, it might just be faster and easier to trace this new shape um, uh, over with the pen tool. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. You get the same thing. There we are. Now, 
I'm gonna make a whole bunch of these. I'm gonna make two per flap. So um, this one, what I want to do is I want to make the stroke invisible. Oop. And I wanna make the fill white. Now be careful, because this is gonna make it kind of disappear on the page, okay? But what I'm gonna do to keep track of it is I'm gonna put it over top my flat. Boop, right there. And um, I'm also gonna go ahead and copy and paste it for the back. I might need to adjust the neckline a little bit because you see it's a different neckline. So I'm just gonna go in and see if I can just do it with the white arrow. If not, we'll figure it out. This might be a little weird because there's a lot of points. I don't know what I just did there. I feel like there's like a hundred points down here. Okay. There we go. We're getting somewhere. And then I'm just going to adjust the curves so that it's not so lumpy. points and all of a sudden. Oh, I should have just cut it and drew another one. This is getting tedious. Oh yeah. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, good enough. Especially for our purposes, I'm just going to nudge it into place because you see it's kind of overlapping. There we go. Uh, perfect. Uh, for our purposes anyways, you'll see why. You said that's not perfect, but it will be perfect. Um, okay, so we have two of these white outlines here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy each one again. And immediately I'm going to fill it with gray so I don't lose it. <laughs> Okie dokie. A little medium gray, I don't know. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it to one, like down into one side, down into one side of my flat. And I'm going to go to effect, blur. I like the Gaussian blur. You guys can uh, play around with different um, blurs, but the Gaussian blur seems to make it look real shadowy. And I'm gonna test it with 10 pixels to make sure it blurs enough. That's not enough. So uh, Control Z to undo. And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna try, let's try 30. And you don't want it too blurry, but you want it blurry enough to kind of look real shadowy. That looks pretty shadowy to me. So now what I'm gonna do is I want to layer this underneath the white. So I'm going to either uh, left kick click on the gray shadow, or sorry, right click and go to arrange and then send to back. Now that will send it back on the current layer. So whenever you're arranging pieces, it only uh, takes into consideration the pieces on your layer. So I can never send it, even if I send it all the way to the back, I'm not sending it below layer two. I have to physically put the layer beneath there, which we actually will do. So I'm going to bring it to the back. Now I could have um, sent my white to the front too. Let's actually, let's do that little different one uh, here. So again, we're gonna copy, we're gonna paste, do this whole thing over again. Double click, make a gray. Oh, actually, I'm gonna make it the same gray by, um, using my eyedropper tool. So I have the same color shadow. You want the same color shadow, It'll look weird if it didn't. Now you can already see how this kind of uh, will look. So um, I'm gonna apply that same blur. What was that, 30? Yep. And I'm going to place it again down into one side. Stick with, you know, if you, once you pick a side, stick with that side. 
and let's bring the white forward and again if you don't have right click or something um, you can go to object arrange up here and let's say bring that to the front okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab this whole layer 4 that has these white silhouettes and the shadow silhouettes and I'm gonna drop it below layer 2 and um, now we have let's just so I don't get any white halos adjust them into place we have a little bit of a drop shadow on our flat and it looks neat it looks cool kind of makes them pop and float out um, so it's sort of just a neat little special effect that can make your flats look a little bit better in addition you might want to just do a little bit of composition a little bit of composition or a little bit of finishing can go a long way um, so what do I mean by that well let's I guess I can do it on this layer let's just put a border in um, let's use my rectangle tool I'm gonna keep the fill invisible and we'll put in a little bit of a border La la la. Maybe make it a little bit more interesting. We'll make that thick and then maybe make another thinner one. Right in the middle. There we go. So, um, now with just a you know very simple add-ons a little bells and whistles that did again didn't take me very long to do um centered a little bit more we get something that looks really finished really polished um and uh will go a long way in sort of uh helping uh your overall sort of effect of uh your flat um again just leaving it the way it was when I said it was finished is perfectly fine but again if you're really trying to build your portfolio or kind of impress people you know you kind of have that um, need uh, you're gonna want to put on a few bells and whistles just to make your stuff stand out because like I said you know one illustrator flat if it's good um, looks like all the rest of them um, so you know it's up to you and how much you really want to do um, how comfortable you really are with Illustrator so if it just you know takes you um, a little bit longer just to get to the normal flat you might want to just stick there um, but again hopefully by you know the end of the semester you'll be very fluent in uh, using Illustrator for flats um, uh, as it is you know uh, very 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 useful and sought after in the fashion industry um, uh, uh, most jobs out there, especially entry, entry level jobs, are going to be looking for people that can do flats in Illustrator. Um, so there you are. That's my sort of little bit of a, a refresher on using Illustrator to do flats. And again, I'm encouraging all of you guys um, uh, to use Illustrator for your flats in the, your collection project. Um, which will be due the 20th. I'll have more information about the project coming out and especially your uh, critique due dates and how the critique is going to work uh, next week. Uh, so next week we have class on Monday and Tuesday. Um, but then it's spring break. Yay! So I won't be seeing you guys for a little while. Um, uh, but, you know, it, I think it's going to be important for us all. I mean, it's not like we're going to have a terribly exciting spring break. But maybe just to take a little bit of breath, a little bit of breather. Um, if you guys want, I don't know what your situation is. Everybody's different. Um, I'm certainly a person that kind of likes to keep busy in these sorts of situations or else I might go insane. So I'll, I'll post up some uh, extra credit assignments. So if you guys are looking to do a little extra credit or are just bored out of your mind and want to do a little sketching, um, uh, you know, it'll, it'll help with that if you want to do it and get extra credit. Um, those of you who just want to take a break and, and forget about it and, and sort of do other things for a little while, that's also fine. Um, but we are going to come back and, uh, well, you also should be working on your collection projects too. I don't know how far you've gotten so far, uh, yet. Um, if you haven't started, uh, I'd, I'd start now. Um, so yeah, and again, any questions or anything you have, just email me. Um, I don't think I'm going anywhere, obviously, but I might, um, I might go um, do a little, just a little bit of camping, just a few days. But other than that, um, I'll be around and available. Um, so yeah, 
I'll see you next week with a couple other lessons and stay healthy, stay safe. Bye-bye, guys.